The most important lesson that we have learned about this recession depression is that the poorest of the poor are paying for Wall Street bankers' mistakes, not by being more impoverished, but they're actually paying with their lives. The number of people that are now starving in the world, the number of people that can have had to take their children out of school has increased. And as we go up the next curve of growth, we need to have a, a much more sustainable way of dealing with the economic platform. Now, it's okay that the rich get richer. I'm very happy that people become more prosperous, but we need to make that prosperity for all people. We need to give people not aid, not handouts, not, not charity. We need to give them social investment. We need to ensure that the human assets that we rely on to create our businesses, our schools, our communities, our countries, are funded properly so that they can focus on being productive assets, productive human beings in their community. So what do we need to do on a global economics platform to bring about this change? Well, it, actually, it's very simple. It takes a change in thinking. It takes one person or more than one to think, let's invest in the human assets. Secondly, it takes an ability to plan from the top down so that we can plan for millions of people, not just a few people. And then thirdly, we have to bring into the equation speed. Because if someone is starving in a country, they can't wait for the next quarterly results to be published in order to have food. We have to get the supply and the demand more matched so that people can still be sustainable even through tough times. The fourth thing we need to do is, as we've planned top down, we need to invest bottom up. So instead of putting the money in at the top of the system and letting it trickle down, which is old-fashioned economics, we need to ensure that the investment goes in at grassroots level, at the communities, with the tools, the technology, and the knowledge for them to be empowered and to be sustainable themselves. So what I've done on a global scale is developed 14 social transformation programs. These take into consideration the community's need. They take into consideration what the G20 are trying to do on a global scale. They understand Wall Street and the whole financial mechanics. And they bring together the resources from all over the world, from bankers and investors, philanthropists, humanitarians, social investment funds that actually care about making those investments at the grassroots level. We're going to see a huge transformation in what is possible because now we have the mobile technologies, we have the internet, so the ability to distribute that knowledge, the stepping stones of how people go from poverty into prosperity are now organized in a way that we can do that. When I first started working on the Africa program, we needed 330 languages to communicate to Africans how they participated in poverty alleviation programs. So what we did was instead of trying to translate everything into 330 languages and then distribute it, we developed a system of training which is visual only. So you can follow step by step the visual guide to how you build a foundation for your children's village or how you put a wind turbine onto the roof or how you fix a solar panel or a solar water heater. These stepping stones actually empower the poor. Then I went into Africa for 114 days, traveled around, met with the community groups, the teachers, the headmasters, the nurses, the priests, the pastors, the nuns, all of the people that are passionately involved in poverty alleviation at a grassroots level. And I learned from then what they didn't know and what they needed to know in order to become sustainable in their community. And it really was an eye-opener because the resourcefulness of these people is absolutely fantastic. You find me a Wall Street banker who could exist on $1 a day. No way. So 
When you look at the resourcefulness, when you look at their ability to teach each other and to pass on knowledge that they have, it's really extraordinary. But what they're missing is the tools and the knowledge and the technology to build that community up, to build sustainable food so they have food security, to harvest the rainwater. In my tour across Kenya, it, it was so amazing that fields would be without water and they would be in drought when there was plenty of rain. But when it rains, they don't capture that rain. So in Kenya, rainwater harvesting is like the number one thing on our agenda. So as we go into country and area by area, we learn things and that's what's the beauty of an international public-private partnership. You are a learning organization that keeps bringing in experiences and resources from wherever they are on the planet and matching the supply and the demand together. And so as we now shift into this next idea economy, this knowledge economy, and we have the mobile technology and the internet technology to reach right to the grassroots level, whether these people are literate or not, now suddenly becomes irrelevant. And by bringing those top level resources and connecting them directly with the grassroots resources, then this empowerment and this transformation can happen. And, and that's very new. Uh, India has just published a report which shows that 85% of government funding that goes to poverty alleviation never even reaches the communities because by the time the top government have passed it down to the states and then passed it down to the regional areas and the local areas, only 15 cents on a dollar actually gets to the poorest of the poor. So it doesn't make sense using the existing infrastructures to deliver a top-down control and command. It makes sense now to use the new global network community and the mobile technologies and the funding from the humanitarian funders, the foundations, the governments, but use it in, in a new, exciting way that actually empowers the poor. So I'm very excited to be leading this green and sustainable revolution across Africa, Turkey, UAE, India, and all the other countries that we're working with. We are so happy to be working with people from 120 countries around the world, and we're so grateful for having the opportunity to empower people to be the change they want to see in the world. So if you want to be involved in global economics and global delivery, then you can contact us and get involved. Whether whatever type of stakeholder you are, whether you're a volunteer, whether you're a corporation, whether you're a government, whether you're an NGO, everyone has a role to play. So please, we have a model now that will empower the poor at the scale and the speed of the need. Join in, be the change you want to see in the world.